Hello and welcome to this lecture series on the Second World War. We're going to start with part one and discuss some myths about the war itself. World War II is probably the most popular uh, war, at least to American historians and probably the American public in general. Uh, and it's often perceived, um, it, it's, it's obtained, obtained a level of mythos around it, right? It's seen as the good war, right? Fought by the greatest generation. And many of the books and movies from this time period we see reflect that, right? Um, but when we take a look, a closer look at the war, we'll see that a lot of this is based on uh, myths that we built around the war itself. Now, we certainly don't have time to go through every myth of the war. If we did that, we could spend weeks, right? But I'll just give you one example to give you a feel for some of the myths that build around the war itself. And a good way to do this is to talk about the war's origins. Here is a narrative that's often put out and may sound familiar to you as far as the origins of the war. World War II was caused by dictators in Germany, Italy, and Japan who had illegally seized power. And they did so against the will of their people and sought to conquer the world and combined into an Axis alliance for that purpose. They were aided in this purpose by a misguided and disastrous British and French policy of appeasement a policy that was indirectly reinforced by American isolationism in the decades in the interwar years, and that the Axis powers as a result of this came very, very close to victory in 1940 and 1941, and were only stopped by the belated realization by America that they needed to get involved in the massive amounts of military aid that they began sending to the Allies as a result to defeat the Axis, right? This, in turn, led to the Axis to make war on the United States through that uh, sneak attack against the uh, against U.S. forces at Pearl Harbor, right? Does this sound like a familiar narrative? It certainly is a pretty common one that's put out there, but when we really take a closer look at it, we see it doesn't really match up with reality. When we break down this myth, we can we break it apart by breaking it into seven different little points, points that just kind of point out the flaws in this in this idea. First of all, myth number or, or point number one is the fact that we ha we shouldn't even look at this war as a single war in the first place. Right. World War Two really is a two for war. There's two wars going on at once. You have a war in Europe that was initiated by uh, Adolf Hitler in Germany in concert with Benito Mussolini in Italy, and a separate Asian war that was going on between the Empire of Japan and China that eventually the United States gets dragged in. Okay. Um, second point, the Allies did not, or the Axis rather, did not seize power against the will of their people. In fact, they, in uh, every case, were democratically elected. Right. When we take a look at the different access powers, we see that in the case of both Italy and Germany, that it was democratic elections um, that uh, led to uh, Hitler and Mussolini coming into power. Right. Ultimately. And then they consolidated that power and transformed their democracy into a dictatorship. In the case of Japan, it's not even that kind of style of government at, at all. It is a, a constitutional monarchy. Right. With an emperor at the head and the emperor is the ultimate authority regardless. OK. Third point, <clears throat> the Axis powers were only allied in name only. Right. They uh, this alliance was very, very loose. They had allied through a, a treaty called the Tripartite Pact. Right. But this Tripartite Pact only stated that if one of those three powers, Japan, Germany or Italy, was attacked, that the other two would attack whoever attacked them. This is why when Japan attacked the United States, Germany was under no treaty obligation to declare war in the United States, even though they did. And when Germany attached, attacked Russia, Japan was under no treaty obligation to declare war on Russia, which they didn't. Point number four, the United States was never, has never, will never be isolationist, right? There were isolationist movements within the United States, but the U.S. itself its policy was to support the uh, the Allies, Britain and France, uh, um, from and ultimately also Russia from the very beginning. Point number five: appeasement was not a dirty word. Appeasement was a very common practice in politics. 
Matter of fact, if you have a sibling, how many times have you been in an argument with your sibling and you've decided, I'm just going to let them have that because it's not worth the fight for me? Guess what you just did? You appeased. Appeasement was a very common practice. The misguidedness that happened amongst France and Britain during this time was just the mere fact that they discovered, a little late, but they did discover, that Adolf Hitler was unappeasable. You couldn't appease him. Okay. Point number six, right? The Axis bid for victory was not brought about by the influx of American supplies. As a matter of fact, they were kind of, they showed up kind of late to the game, right? But it was by the fact or the mere uh, uh, point that Britain and then Russia didn't quit. They kept on keeping on in 1940, 1941. That arsenal democracy doesn't really start to feel its force and its effect until late 1942 at the earliest. Right. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Right. And seventh, se seventh point, And lastly, Pearl Harbor had nothing to do with retaliation over American aid to uh, to uh, Germany or to Britain and France. Rather, it had everything to do with the fact that Japan wanted to continue its expansion and the economic warfare that FDR was uh, performing against Japan was getting in the way of their goals. And so they decided they needed to knock the U.S. Navy out so they could continue their expansion, their Japanese imperialism. So the question becomes, why do we hold on to these myths? Well, honestly, there's a few reasons behind this. First of all, if we don't hang on to these myths, it tends to detract from or at least uh, mi uh, uh, minimize our own personal ideas. Our own ideas drive this. We see ourselves as a nation of democratic values and democracy being the pinnacle of all forms of government. Well, when you acknowledge the fact that the Axis powers, especially Hitler and Mussolini, obtained power through the democratic po process, that kind of uh, dilutes that uh, argument that uh, democracy is the best form of government. These dictators came through to power dem uh, democratically. And also, it forces us to downplay the role of Russia in the war, even though they did play a major role. Why? Well, we otherwise, we have to acknowledge the fact that in this quote-unquote good war, we had to ally with a brutal dictator who ultimately will kill more people than Adolf Hitler did. Right. So it's all part of our image building. And this often drives our perceptions in history is uh, how does that our perception of the hit of history? Uh, how is it driven by uh, the perception we want to have of ourselves? Right. That's still true even to this day.